Previously, the 11 steel beams arrived that are necessary to properly support the second floor of our home. Nine will be placed in the ceiling of the safe room and two will go in the main area of the house. The first of which weighed a whopping 460 pounds. And it can be very dangerous, so you've got to take it slow, put it up, inch it in, be very careful because if it comes crashing down, it's an issue. With only the two of us and a duck jack, we worked quickly to safely get it installed before nightfall. Today, we take our chances again with the next steel beam. We're gonna take five minutes this morning to finish up what we started working on the solar panels. As you guys remember, we started boxing in around the stanchion itself just to keep the sheep, Leon, and Dexter out from underneath the panels. So far, we're boxing three of the four sides around the panels themselves with a three quarter inch channel. And so far, it's been tested and proven on the sides that got blocked. They are getting in just from the sides that's not blocked. So this morning, we're gonna go through there and get it all buttoned up and we're gonna be in the clear. So I know that it seems like this probably wouldn't work because it's so low and the cows are so big. They could technically just step over it and still get in there. But believe it or not, there's this whole psychological thing with cows where if you place an object like channel or even a hot wire at their knee height, they won't go over it. I don't know why it is, but <laughs> it's tried and trusted and they won't do it. And for the sheep, it's about up to chest height and they don't go in there either. No, so it's Leon proof. To be honest, there's so many other places that they could go to like the woods or even underneath the yeah. barn to get shelter that they're not that desperate to get under. No, so in the middle of the field, there's a, a big old shade here, they go here, that's how it works. Instead it's out of, of pure laziness. Out. That's all it is. <laughs> It is so beautiful outside. I don't know if you guys can tell, but the leaves on some of the trees are already starting to change color and it smells like fall outside. It's just amazing. Hey there. Hey there. Hey there. Are you scaring the bears off? Yeah. You're doing a good job. Hiking is one of the best things to do out here in West Virginia. It's certainly one of our most favorite things to do. Yeah, I mean, with so many different trails to hit, even if you hit the same trail year after year, it just never gets old. <laughs> There's too many trails to hit them all, so it never gets old. Yeah. What's this? That was that bear you scared off. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. Did you guys hear about the story with the family of five that went up the trail and only four came back? <laughs> what? There's an incline the whole way, guys. <laughs> Are you tired yet? <laughs> you can make it, Ellie. You can do it. You're strong. I can. <laughs> you can. I can. So once we get to the top, we'll go back down the easy way and uh, it should be smooth sailing from there on out. Yes. Hopefully. We'll see. Before we carry on, we wanted to stop a minute, fuel up, and thank today's sponsor, Huel. Huel Hot and Savory makes nutrition a whole lot easier. There's no tricks, no fuss, no fad diets. Just a perfectly balanced plant-based meal packed with 27 vitamins and minerals ready in minutes. We simply boil some water, add it to our bowl with one or two scoops of our favorite flavor, cover, and let it sit for five minutes. And just like that, we have a 100% nutritionally complete meal that's not only high in protein but low in sugar and salt. It's perfect meal for when you're out adventuring like we are or if your days are just jam-packed and you need to fuel up but you want to do it right because it's so convenient and allows us to stay on track with our nutritional goals. We both opted for the Cajun pasta. It's delicious. It's a little spicy so it's right up my alley. It's an easy source of fiber and it's packed with flavor. It is, it's basically got all the essential nutrients mm -hmm. that we need to just keep on keeping on. If you're interested in checking out Huel, click our link in the description box below or head to myhuel.com slash WWOG. And with your first order, you'll receive free shipping, a Huel t-shirt and a guide to get you started.
We got our first steel beam installed where the A-frame meets the addition. I lagged the one side down and I kept the duck jack up in the air just to make everything safe. Today we're gonna go back through, we're gonna take our structural screws and lag the steel beam down to the post. I'm gonna put several of these screws on both sides, but then I'm gonna take some angle brackets and screw them to the top of the steel beam and attach them to the side of the existing house. All right, we're locked in. That one's done. Ready to start beam number two? So Josh has the first beam all locked into place and secured. We've gone ahead and lowered and removed the duck jack. So now we're basically just gonna do that entire thing all over again, except this should be at least a little bit easier because the first beam that we put up was like, how much, 460 pounds? 460, this one's 315. Yeah, 315 versus 460. So that should make a little bit of a difference because it is quite a bit lighter. <laughs> we do have an issue. Now that yep. I'm up here, I can see my issue. I have a wall in my way. Cut the wall down, but look. <laughs> so the beam needs to sit on these two posts here. The top of the beam needs to be at the elevation of this two by four right here. So the beam actually needs to slide in. It's on top of this post. So the wall is in the way. When we built the wall, we tied it directly into the post, not really paying attention. Now we're paying the piper to get this fixed. So we'll cut it down. We'll cut everything out of the way. We'll slide the beam in place and we'll back build everything onto the bottom of the beam and we're done. It's not a big deal, but uh, it's what it is. We'll fix it. The, the difference is that that wall over there that mm -hmm. tied into the beam, it was right at the edge, so it wasn't a corner piece. This one's got the corner in the yeah, way, this, and that's where we messed it up. These are tied to the bottom of the beam, but it's all good. We'll fix it. We're not professionals here. We're DIYers. <laughs> Speak for yourself. I've got my license in concrete. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only show you don't need a license in. <laughs> <laughs> On the bright side, we got more kickers coming down. Make all your dreams come true today. You know, the beam itself is actually eight inches and five sixteenths of an inch. Be down right here. Seven eighths. Seven eighths. You just all cut it down. We'll throw the beam up. We done by dinner time, baby. So that post had to get cut regardless. Yes. But had we cut that one first, prior to building the walls, we probably would have realized that that wall needed to tie into the shorter post. You know what I mean? It's all your fault. <laughs> you know? I rushed him while he was looking at his looking drawings one things. day. <laughs> I don't remember what day it was, but it happened. <laughs> Voila. Back in action. Pretty good. Then we're gonna grab a couple of two by fours. We're gonna put them in place and tie the wall back together before we put the steel beam up. We're gonna install the beam here in the gym. The reason why we're using steel beams here and also the steel beam behind me is because the span is so great. It's actually gonna hold the second floor up and there's also other loads that are coming down on top of the steel beam where a wooden beam or an LVL stacked up wouldn't suffice. So we have to go to steel to meet the load requirements. The last one was 460 it. pounds, this one's 315 pounds. It's gonna be a little bit easier. So we pick it up, we push, we spin it, we roll it, we flip it over, put it on top, it goes up. Just like that. Let me get pizza. <laughs> we didn't get pizza last time. <laughs> we're supposed to. We're so tired so I'd make eggs and oatmeal instead. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Nothing. I did with one hand. The entire time I brought back with one hand. I was wondering why it was so heavy. Huh. Hurry up! <laughs> more, more. How's that? <laughs> I had to get the camera. I'm so sorry. So the plan is to use our trusty PVC pipe to roll this over. I slow down a little bit. And then we're going to rotate the pipe and we are going to push it through the wall, back onto the PVC pipe, and then rotate it again and nicely center it on top of the duck jack. And hopefully we don't duck it up. That's the plan. <laughs> well, I think the other beam has been this easy. All right, come a little closer. It's almost there, a little closer. 
Good, good, good. Good. Yeah, it's close enough. So the beam's in location on the ground. We're gonna take the duck jack, or we'll slide it middle of the duck jack under the middle of the steel beam. We're gonna go up, we'll put it in place, lag it down, and we're gonna do it before nightfall, hopefully. It's going so smooth, it's almost making me nervous. <laughs> It was a lot easier than the last one. I know. That one was, was a lot heavier too. Yeah. So, cool. One, two, three, pick up. Oh. Can you pick yourself up and slide it over? Cool. You ready? Yeah, let's go up. We're down. Let's uh, take the hammer, beat that that way a little bit, and then hit it back this way. Then we'll lock it down, and we're good. Good deal. <laughs> It's locked into place. Very easy. How do we get ourselves into this? It's you. It's you. <laughs> it's you. So the goal today is going to be getting the floor joists up all the way across the steel beam that we installed in the gym area of the house. It has been extremely rainy here lately, so we're trying to sneak work and build on the house in wherever we can. Yep. But as a side note, just so you guys know, do not worry about the subfloor on the house. I can assure you that it is rated for water. Apparently yes. it's supposed to be rated for like... It's a van tech. So this, their claim to fame is 365 days of rain. So we're going about two months, so we should be good. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing we need to do is install a top plate above the windows. We'll get that installed. We'll work around to the side walls here. We also need another two by six for a top plate on there. And then we're ready to go to the next step. In order to attach the floor joist to the beam, we're going to need to drill into the beam and then put down a two by six and attach that to the beam. And then at that point, the floor joists are going to run all the way from this wall with the windows on it, all the way up across the beam and over to that wall over there. And then once we get past this point, we'll be able to put up the next set of floor joists that's going to run from that wall over to the other beam by the A-frame and actually connect into the A-frame itself. Flat down. I'm gonna measure off for 16 on the center of the floor joist and where I'm at, I'm gonna go ahead and put something in. So if I go in the center, I'm good to go. Put the bolts in between the floor joists so the floor joists will not be sitting on top of the bolts. We're just gonna do them a few throughout here just to hold them down. This is just to hold the center of the floor joist up. Keep in mind, we ran the length of floor joists beneath us with uh, 12 inch tall ones. These are nine and a half inch. So having this in the center is what's gonna help hold it up completely. But I don't anticipate a few holes holding this thing down to really interfere with the structural integrity of the steel beam. We'll put a few here and there and we're good to go. I'm gonna take my 10 pound hammer and beat the bottom dunnage over. We're gonna move the entire stack instead of unstacking the entire thing to get to the bottom. All I gotta do is grab 10 out of here. If I drop this entire thing over, grab 10, call it a day. Genius. Right? I knew I married you for a reason. Oh yeah. Could it work. Ah. 
Got it. We're good. starting to go from just kind of like drizzling to a steady flow of rain. We're not made of sugar. No. But my feet are very wet. They are wet. <laughs> very wet. These old things have done me so well, but now, you know. Back to your boots, girl. They've seen better days. These things lasted me literally like four or five years. I know. Yeah. I'm gonna frame them along with the nail gun that the original nail gun that literally like built this house. Yeah, the screw gun too. Yeah, and the screw gun. Also. <laughs> what a strange collection, right? So it's too big for your handle, huh? Can I fit through these studs with one of these? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh guy, where is this going? I'm stuck. I'm stuck. <laughs> suck it in, punch! Suck it in! <laughs> It's good we're eating eggs and oatmeal for dinner these days. So I have everything marked. The plan is for Erin to do all the grunt work. That's what she's good at. She's gonna go from down here, push up. I'm gonna put it into the calculated location um, and I'm gonna nail it down. I see what she did there. What's that? You start bringing up math, uh -huh. which is not my strong suit. And then that's, that's how I get put on the grunt work end of Correct. things. Correct, it's okay. That's pretty smart. Like, like you, you handle text messages and emails. Oh. I can crunch numbers. That's how it works. <laughs> You yeah. have to cook a mean dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Yeah. One, One two, two, three. So we hoped that the rain would stop, but it has not. And it's just making everything absolutely slippery from the floor joists to obviously the beam, any wood you're touching, the ladder. And we've just decided that it is too dangerous to continue. Yeah, so. too dangerous to continue up here. And the easiest way to do it is get up here and do it. It's not safe. No, it's not. That's where it is. My boots won't come out. You're stuck in the mud? Yeah. We'll rescue you. Boots. Dude, you're covered in mud. Hold tight. Oh, you stop. <laughs> Stay back. I don't, I don't put my boots.